Hello everyone, this is Dalster and welcome to another Music Topics video. In today's Music Topics video, I will focus on one of my favorite albums, The Dark Side of the Moon, by one of my favorite bands, Pink Floyd. The reason why I wanted to do this album review is because it's the 50th anniversary of this album, as it was released on March 1st, 1973. To this day, it's still one of my favorite albums, even though I've listened to it a bunch of times. I wanted to go over each song and describe my take on it. I hope you guys enjoy this video as we celebrate this album that is one of its kind. Interesting facts about this album is that it's supposed to be about the pressures of the band's lifestyle and the mental health of one of its founding members, Sid Barrett. Parts of the song, Breathe, were used from earlier works from a soundtrack called The Body. Pink Floyd changed the album name to Eclipse for a temporary time because another band named Medicine Head was using the title Dark Side of the Moon for an album as well. Pink Floyd eventually changed it to the original title since Medicine Head's album didn't do so great back then. The lyrical themes were about conflict, greed, the passage of time, death, and Sid Barrett's insanity of his deteriorating mental state. The album also explores a mysterious outlook about the reality of life and war on both sides. I'll start with the first song, which is Speak To Me. Speak To Me is a very short song as it's mostly just a bunch of noises leading up to the second song, Breathe. The song at the beginning is quiet for a couple of seconds followed by a heartbeat with some thumping. There's also a machine or a car running and a cash register playing in the background followed by a menacing laugh. At the end, it sounds like someone is screaming or running for their lives. It then quickly transitions to breathe. But before I get to breathe, I want to focus on the first track a little more. The song is very bizarre but flows well with the second. I like the thumping and menacing laugh, but it questions you on what this album is when you first listen to it. Hearing it again, the song gives you a sneak peek of what the album is before the rest of the songs play throughout, which is very interesting and unique. I don't really like Speak To Me by itself, but it's interesting as it quickly foreshadows the entire album. I give it a 7 out of 10 as it's very small but well thought, and the laugh is quite interesting and evil too. The second song is Breathe in the Air. Breathe connects to Speak To Me. From the beginning, it gives out a lot of nice melodies. I think they use a lot of synthesizers for this song as it goes in a variety of directions. David Gilmour's vocals can be heard throughout. It's one of my favorites on this album because it's so beautiful when you listen to it. In a way, it's depressing but makes you question, what is life? What is the meaning of life? In this song, the lyrics seem like they're talking about the challenges of life. I think it talks about the challenges in life we go through, such as the tide we ride at the end of the song, and how we are rabbits in some weird way. Rabbits dig holes, and I feel like the holes represent obstacles or challenges that we deal with in life. All we have to do is move forward. All in all, I really like this song, so it's a 10 out of 10 because of the variety of sounds. Comment down below what do you guys think of this song, in your opinion. The melody of sounds are so beautiful and something to hear if you lay on the grass and look at the sky. Just a thing. The third song is On The Run and it's mostly random sounds. One of them sounds like an engine or system running on with a female commanding voice in the background. Almost like from an announced speaker of some sort. There's also the sound of a jet or plane. Around two minutes, it sounds more aggressive with an evil laugh and some sort of a scratchy sneer. It's a very weird, complicated song that has the evil laugh towards the end. I give it a 5 out of 10 since it's okay but it's very random and weird. I like it but I don't like it at the same time and it gives off the, this evil vibe as if it's the end of the world kind of feeling while listening to it. Overall, it's an okay song, just not my type of song that I would listen to every day. The fourth song is Time. Time starts off with one clock sound and quickly goes into a variety of them. There's this hard thump along with some drumming. David Gilmour and Richard Wright are singing this song throughout. I like the intro as it takes its time and prepares for a big bang. Gilmore's voice is so beautiful, especially with the female backup singers. 
I love the guitar solo in the middle of this song, as it sounds like something serious, but in a weird way, you want to headbang this song. It's definitely one of those songs that you listen to when you're angry and want to take out frustrations. I think the song is supposed to be about rushing through things before time runs out, sort of like a timer towards the end. It's almost as if you finished a race and are calming down after a long run. Definitely a 10 out of 10 because of how beautiful the guitar solo is and how it flows perfectly with the timing of this song. The drumming of Nick Mason also flows well throughout the song too. Reminds me of Native American or drumming in a way, especially in the beginning of this song. One of my favorites for sure and never goes out of style, especially the guitar. Interesting fact about this song is that they used it for the intro of the Marvel movie, The Eternals. The fifth song is The Great Gig in the Sky. I'm not going to lie, this is honestly a favorite of mine and describes my life. We hear the words of a male saying he is not frightened of dying. I thought it was Roger Waters or David Gilmour saying it, but it was a man named Jerry O'Driscoll who was a doorman. At the end, you also hear a female voice of a woman saying she is not afraid of dying, who was Patricia Watts, the wife of road manager Peter Watts. Claire Torrey does the vocals throughout the entire song, and it's hauntingly beautiful. The song starts off with the slow sound that Richard Wright does with his keyboard. It sounds very serious and sad, as if a person has something important to say, followed by Jerry's quote of not being afraid to die. There's also this chorus in the background that flows with the song. Then Claire's voice is heard wailing in such an angry, sad, but battle cry kind of way. In the beginning, it's serious and strong, but right in the middle, it slows down a little bit. Towards the end, it sounds like she's crying as she is singing, followed by Patricia's quote of not being afraid to die. The song resonates with me because it's sort of like how my life is or was back then. It was tragic in the beginning, followed by the, all the ups and downs that came into it. I know it's a weird opinion of mine about describing how my life was, but I definitely give this song a 10 out of 10. Supposedly, Claire sued for royalties of this song in 2004, but they managed to settle. The song is now credited by Richard Wright and Claire Torrey. Definitely a great song, even though there are no words singing except Claire's voice flowing in, but it gets you in the feels. I have to admit, it looks tough to sing live, as I saw another singer trying to sing it live in the OC Fair recently this year. It's so beautiful and sad, but goes in a very high note that's really difficult for a singer to sing, I bet. We are halfway as we are on the sixth song. The song is called Money. There is also a music video for it with how people spend their money and coins. You can also hear a saxophone throughout the song. The beginning sounds like a cash register being open, as you also heard a snippet of it in Breathe. Sounds like the song is about people spending money and how greedy one becomes, especially the part where it says, keep your hands off my stack. I like that they added the saxophone in the middle of the song. The guitar solo sounds really good in this one as it hits at such high notes. I remember hearing it in a show once called Grounded for Life. Really good song as I give it a 10 out of 10. Gilmore's guitar solo goes hard in this one and it sounds clean. The seventh song is Us and Them, which is another one of my favorite songs off this album. It's the longest song on this album as it is over 7 minutes but worth the listen to. I'll go over it and give my opinion at the end of the description of the song. At the beginning of the song you hear this long melody that kind of feels like a daze. We then go through instruments like the guitar, piano, and saxophone. I like the saxophone as it gives you this beautiful harmony. David Gilmour's voice in this song is hauntingly beautiful. I also like the female backup singers as they flow with this song and his vocals. The piano hits hard in this song as it makes me want to headbang. Overall, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. Supposedly, the song is about war and the two sides of the battlefield while they are about to battle. Roger Waters wrote this as it is supposed to be sad. The song reminds him of church, but for me, it kind of reminds me of the book 1984. I don't know if you guys ever read that book, but just to give a quick summary, it's about the authority watching you. We also get someone talking in the middle of the song as his name was Roger the Hat Manifold, which I guess is supposed to represent shooting the enemies of some sort. 
It's kind of hard to hear, though. I like it, but never knew it was about war until this year. It makes sense when one of the lyrics mentions, "Listen, son," said the man with the gun. Really timeless and makes me think of life in a beautiful perspective. The eighth song is "Any Color You Like," and it's just instrumental with synthesizers. It goes up and down each time, but in a beautiful rhythm section. There is some guitar, which makes it a little calmer. The synthesizers are a bit strong for the ears, but it's a nice sound. It's okay, but I feel like you need to be in the mood for it sometimes. I could see it as a trip for those on the substance, but don't recommend it. I give it a nine out of ten, as it is a beautiful and haunting song too. The ninth song is "Brain Damage," which connects to Eclipse, which that is happens to be the tenth song. Also, there's a music video for the two songs just mashed together. It was originally supposed to be called "Lunatic." The song is supposed to be about Sid Barrett's mental instability. Peter Watts was the man laughing evilly throughout the two songs, and I think he was. In the entire al- album in general, I could see how it's related to Sid because of the part where it sings "The Lunatic is in My Head" and not thinking clearly. I like the female backup singers as they float throughout the t- last two songs. This song sounds like something or someone taking over you when you're in the mental state. I don't know if you guys felt like that before, but I have at times. It's sort of like your dark side taking over. I give it a ten out of ten since it's very descriptive and makes you think if this is what Sid was like when he was not himself. I think the evil laugh is supposed to represent mental instability. Maybe like something a schizophrenic person would probably feel. The end of the song has a low synthesizer with the evil laugh and connects with Eclipse. The last and tenth song is Eclipse. Which is pretty short. It starts off with the serious melody. There's this strong buildup with the guitar that ends in a climax. You can hear Waters and Gilmore throughout the entire song. The ending, much like the first song, has the heartbeat at the end. It's a ten out of ten, as it's a great finish to the a great album. The song is very empowering to me. I love the part where it ends with "But the sun is eclipsed by the moon." Which the album mentions Moon in their title. Overall, this album is a 10 out of 10, as it never gets old when you listen to it, even after so many times. Definitely one of the greatest, as it turned 50 this year. I love everything about it. Although On the Run is probably my least favorite. Favorite songs off this album are Time, The Great Gig in the Sky, and Us and Them, as each song is sad but so beautiful and worth listening to. The album cover is very iconic as well, since to this day, as you can see it in shirts, one of those phone holders that you stick on your cell phone, all other mo- merchandise. It's a long album, but worth a listen to, and have your head in the clouds while the album is playing somewhere, whether it's a CD player or an iPod Touch, a phone, or any other device. Rhythms, melodies, and the instruments really flow, as it is a beautiful work of art for this music. The female backup singers are also iconic with the help of David Gilmour's guitar solos. Richard Wright definitely shined in this album too, with the hard-hitting piano heard in the Great Gig in the Sky and Us and Them. The most random sounds, such as the helicopter, clocks, and cash register, made this album stand out and gives you, or upcoming musicians, a reason to want to experiment with music. Lots of history with this album, as it is still one of the top albums of on the charts, wherever charted. That is, this album was unique and will live on forever in the hearts of us Pink Floyd fans. So I'm here at Barnes and Noble, and I see the album cover for Pink Floyd's、um, "Dark Side of the Moon." Well, actually, it's like a book. I'm not sure for what though. Oh, it's the artwork. It's not the album. Sorry about that. It's currently at seventy. Oh wait, sixty dollars. That is kind of pricey, though. I mean, it is the fiftieth anniversary. I just wanted to show you guys, since you know this is like a, an album review of the entire album. I would definitely recommend buying it if you can. The album, not this one. I mean, sixty is kind of a lot, though. But it's a really good album, in my opinion. Definitely worth the listen to. But anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed this album review, as it is a couple months late, and I'm really sorry about that. But happy New Year, guys, and thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Comment, like, subscribe. Take care of your mental health and everyone around you, and I'll do the same too.
Until next time, bye guys.